Good morning, good morning. If you grab your hymn books, please, and come on in and turn to hymn number 59. Hymn number 59. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Hymn number 59. 59. Days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary. is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today. Leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. is very near. Troubled soul, the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Amen. All right, thank you, Alex. All right, well, welcome to Patuxent Baptist Church. I'm so glad to see you guys. I've been gone for a while, and it's good to be home. It is really good to be home. Um, Pastor Connor is with Pastor Ed Beard. I don't know, most of you know him. He started a church in Annapolis, Free State Baptist Church. They're celebrating their ninth anniversary today, so Pastor Connor was able to be there with them. And, uh, and you're stuck with this guy. So just buckle in. I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, Morgan, go ahead and turn the temperature up a little bit. Make it warmer in here. That'll make everybody happy. And uh, I never do that, never have in my whole life. But uh, just to keep everybody a little bit happy. Um, I have no idea what's going on. My, I'm just uh, winging it. Brother, uh, um, that guy over there told me, hey, he goes, right now is when you're supposed to walk up there. So is it time for announcements? Oh, come on up. I am pray. Let's go ahead and get started. Lord, I do love you. I thank you for your goodness. God, I thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for church and what it means to have a church family. Uh, what a blessing. That is, God, I pray that you'd help us today to honor you and to lift you and be encouraged. These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, whenever I preach here Sunday mornings, I'm the same way. <laughs> Usually looking over Brother Al, what do I do now? <laughs> All right, say good morning, everybody. So uh, good to have the Tulsas back and uh, just keep praying for them. Um, and pray for Pastor, too, while he's up preaching at Brother Beard's. So uh, this week, um, I think we've returned to a full regular schedule. Homeschool Chapel uh, this Friday at 2 p.m. here at church. And uh, assuming I get a thumbs up from Tim, all teen activities right. are as, as normally scheduled for this week. All right. And then, uh, and, and I guess it, it's, it's passed, but, you know, it was, uh, I was out at the, the uh, church property Friday uh, for part of the, uh, the, the family camp out, and it was real nice. Brother Green preached. It was fantastic. It was, the weather was really good. Chilly, but it was really good. And um, a number of you folks were out there, and um, certainly do appreciate all the folks that, that worked to, to put that together. Um, okay, so uh, Missions Month begins next Sunday. All right, and you can see, uh, you can look up there, and you can see the missionaries that we're going to have coming. Um, 
and we'll have either one or two every Sunday. So if you could pray for them, and then this uh, Saturday at 9 a.m., um, there's going to be a church-wide prayer meeting. So if you can make it, and I, and I believe the, 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 the reason for this is we want to go ahead and just pray for missions month. All right, just that it'd be just a special time. And I'll be honest, I, missions month is, is I don't say it's like, the, it's one of my favorite things. I, I really do. In this church, more than any other church that I've been a member of, I've had the opportunity to, to talk to missionaries and rub elbows with missionaries, and, uh, and it's just been a blessing. So um, anyway, Saturday next, this coming Saturday at 9 o'clock, if you want, there's going to be a church-wide prayer meeting. Uh, we're going to be praying for missions, and these are the missionaries that are coming. Um, I don't know if you can see them all there, but we got Becca Pate, uh, Brazil, Tim Pleasure, uh, All Nations Outreach, Joe McConkie, um, have the grace, I believe that's, that's how you say that, and then um, Brother McCurry, he was here for graduation, and then Peter Duke was here not that long ago, uh, Mexico, so, um, and then upcoming events, there's going to be a Go Team activity, November 17th. Now, I've tried to get more information about that, but I think Pastor's the one who's running it, and he's not here today. Um, so I'll have to wait uh, to, till he's back so I can find out. Um, but it used to be uh, 55 and up. Used to be. But I haven't talked to Pastor, so I don't know what the requirements are for this. Um, but uh, just stay tuned. And then uh, Grand Prix. Now, we, we had a hiatus here. We haven't done this in about two years, I think. But for a while there, this was, uh, this was a thing that we did uh, usually in late, late winter, early spring, and we're going to be doing it again this year, okay? So Kids for Christ Grand Prix is coming up in February. Um, they're going to have several divisions, age divisions, peewee, junior division, senior division, and then a teen and adult division. Um, so start thinking about car designs. They're going to be, uh, cars are going to be coming up for sale. It's going to be uh, $5 per kit, and you're going to have to order these and pay for them by Wednesday, November 15th. All right, and you have to use the kits provided by the car, by the car, the kits provided by the church. You can get kits elsewhere, but we want you using the ones provided. Look, the money's going towards Kids for Christ, so let's pay for the ones that the church is, all right? Um, and see, uh, I think it's Kelly Haynes. Yep, see Kelly Haynes to, uh, to order. And then uh, when, you get, when you get the kits, there's going to be instructions on what you can, cannot do, rules, so forth and so on. But, um, and, and there'll be announcements on, on workshops for folks that need help. Uh, um, uh, putting those together and making them and designing them, but uh, um, there'll be more on that. But anyway, something to look forward to in February is Kids for Christ. It's really a fun time. All right, and I think that's about it. Okay. All right. All right, before we grab our hymn books, is there any first-time visitors here today in this section to start? No, no. In the middle, any first time or been a long time? Over here in this section, Megan, would you be able to introduce your guests? Just so we don't embarrass her too much. <laughs> Rebecca, uh, well, praise the Lord. We're glad to have you, Miss Rebecca. Um, if the usher hasn't given you a, a visitor packet, we'll make sure to get you one, okay? All right, if you'd stand with me, please, and grab your hymn books and turn to hymn number 362. Some of you might recognize this one. Beyond, the, uh, sorry, 361, Heavenly Sunlight. 361, Heavenly Sunlight. We're going to sing the first verse and the chorus, and then we'll greet one another, and then we'll sing the last verse in the chorus. Walking in sunlight all of my journey over the mountain through the deep vale Jesus has said I'll never forsake thee promise divine that never can fail heavenly sunlight heavenly sunlight flooding my soul with glory divine hallelujah Just welcome one another.
come together. In the bright sunlight, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing His praises, Jesus is mine. Amen. And we'll have... All right, we're going to receive the offering. Brother Adam's going to pray for us. Pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for letting us come before your presence with singing, Lord. We just pray that you'll meet with us today. We lift up Brother Tullus, Lord. Just pray your spirit will fill him. Just give us the words that we need to hear. And, Lord, just anoint him during this time. And, Lord, bless this offering that you give for your good and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you be seated. Well, thank you, Meredith. All right. Well, let's see. It's still a quarter till. Man, we're doing good. I got plenty of time. If, you, uh, if you'll turn in your Bibles, let me get my notes out. I'm going to be a whole lot of places. I'm going to start in Mark chapter 14. As, as you make your way there, I'm going to try to, well, I want to say thank you for praying for me and my family. Um, my dad passed, uh, I guess uh, it was on a Saturday, about 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't remember the date. It's been a couple weeks. It's been a blur the last few weeks, but sure love my daddy. <clears throat> but the Lord was good to us. Uh, as a family, we got to go down there a couple months ago, brought the whole family down and spent about a week with them and enjoyed visiting with them and, and sitting with them and seeing them and all that stuff. They got to meet Rhett for the first time. And, uh, and then uh, we came on back. I got to spend about a week with them after that, um, just me, myself, going down there, uh, filling in for my brother. And during that time, they had decided that they were going to move back to Maryland with us and just move into the house. And I guess maybe a, a few days before I went back, the doctor called me, and he was back in the hospital, and he was suffering and just having a rough time. And uh, she asked me if I'd just come on, so I did. And uh, God was good. There was a local preacher there. His name's Pastor Graff fantastic man of God. He picked me up at the airport, dropped me off the at the hospital. My daddy's sisters were there in the room when I got there. My brother and my mother was there. And uh, 
uh, Jimmy Floyd, which is a cousin, he's a preacher, he was there, we got to visit, and uh, I got to talk to Daddy, got to hold his hand, got to tell him I love him, that was really big, anyway, and he said, so uh, what are you doing here? <laughs> And I said, well, I'm just in the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop by. And he said, oh. And we visited for a while, and about a half hour later, he said, Tim, why are you in the neighborhood? <laughs> and uh, just, uh, it was a good visit. And then everybody left for the night, and me and Mama got to stay there. And, and uh, I guess the pain medicine finally kicked in, and he got some sleep, I guess, around 2 o'clock in the morning. And by 4 o'clock, he had passed into eternity. And I say, thank you for your prayers. I just can't imagine a better passing. He passed in his sleep. He is in no more pain. He's in glory right now. And, uh, and then we packed up everything that they had and brought it back here to Maryland and with my mom. And so mama's at the house with Karen right now. And, and uh, daddy's in glory. Praise the Lord. So... I want to preach a message this morning that God laid on my heart through this. Um, talked about being adopted. And uh, some of you know, some of you may not know, that Tony, my brother, he's about a year and a half older than me, are both adopted. We're, we're adopted at birth. And that'll have a little bit of a significance in this message. But my parents could not have kids, and... and 67 in February, they got a call and said that there was a young lady having a baby that uh, she didn't want. And I'm not sure exactly how all that worked out. Seems kind of shady to me, but they went and got my brother <laughs> and, uh, and uh, had him for about a year and a half. And they got another call from the hospital and there was another young lady who, who didn't want her baby. And they just went and picked me up. They quit all that after me. <laughs> <laughs> but they say that they prayed us down from heaven. And I, the, the older they got and the more that I met people while I was around them, they would call us, you know, their, their babies from heaven and stuff like that. And many of you know me and know that that's a stretch. But anyway, I want to talk about being adopted when I was born, that's the only thing that I offered, period. Um, they didn't go to a nursery and, and look at the babies in the nursery and say, oh, no, that one's too chubby and that one's too skinny and that one will never be able to grow a beard. They didn't, <laughs> they didn't get to do that. They just, at birth, I was theirs. And the papers were signed and I was fully theirs. And I was born into a family that loved God, which is just a blessing. Um, I was born into a family that made church a big deal. They, uh, they were in the church every time the doors were open. Uh, my mom was a church secretary. My daddy was a, was a deacon, and we were always at church. That's all I knew growing up, and I loved that. I never knew a daddy that was sorry. My daddy was a good man. And uh, he's a charactered man. He never called in sick. He would just crawl in and work. He worked every day. He was just a good, hardworking man. He loved my mama. He loved us kids. He was just a good guy. I was born into that family. And the only thing that I did was I was born. I want you to look in Mark chapter 14 down in verse 36. While you're going there, I want to tell you in Scripture there are many different names used to describe God. While all the names of God are important in many ways, the name Abba, Father, is one of the most significant names of God in understanding how He relates to people. The word Abba is an Aramaic word that means Father. It was a common term that expressed affection and confidence and trust. Abba signifies the close, intimate relationship of a father and his child, as well as a childlike trust that a young child puts in his daddy. Abba is always followed 
by the word Father in Scripture. And the phrase is found three, in three passages. This first passage is Jesus crying out to his Abba Father in Gethsemane. In Mark chapter 14, verse 36, he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. This is Jesus speaking to his Abba, Father in heaven, knowing that he can, and he's the only one that could do something different in the salvation of man. He's the only one he could have cried out to. And that's who he cried out to, Abba, Father. But at the end of that, he said, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. This is where God uh, did a work in my heart during this last few weeks. It was in Romans chapter 8. I know many of you have lost loved ones recently, some not so recently, but I will tell you that there's hope, especially if you know your lost one is saved, or you're the one that you lost is saved and in heaven. I don't have any doubt that my father is in heaven right now. I've talked to him on many occasions about his testimony and and uh, when he was born again, and uh, he, was, he was saved as a teenager in an old Brush Arbor meeting, like a camp meeting, camp style meeting. And, uh, but here in Romans 8, we see a different scenario. We see our standing. In Romans chapter 8, in verse 15, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. If you're born again in here today, then you have a Father in heaven that you can cry out to, Abba, Father. Just like running to your daddy and saying, Daddy, I need help. Daddy, I've, I've messed this up. And... and uh, I don't know how many phone calls. I think my dad knew everything. And I don't know how many phone calls. When I had a problem, I would call my daddy, and I would sit down and, and talk to my mama for a little bit because my daddy never answered the phone. And I'd talk to her for a little bit and say, I need to talk to daddy. And she'd put him on the phone, and I'd say, hey, how you doing? He would say, fine, what do you need? <laughs> and I would tell him what I needed. And it was usually something broke. And I needed somebody to tell me how to get through it. And he was always there for that. The Bible here says we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Like there's a past that we were bound by something. And this is speaking directly about being born again. And it says that we've not received the spirit of bondage again unto fear. In other words, our fear of death. Should not, we shouldn't have that anymore. Our fear of sin, we shouldn't have that anymore. You don't want to live in sin, but you shouldn't be afraid of it. You've got someone you can run to. We're actually, as children of God, we're free from sin. And we'll talk about that a little bit in the end. In the context of adoption, the spirit in our hearts cries out, Abba, Father. Together, the terms Abba, Fa Abba and Father doubly emphasize the fatherhood of God in two different languages, we are assured of God's care for his children. Now, I want to I park here just for a minute because there's many people who have an idea of who God is. Um, there's many people who have an idea of what religion is. There's many people who have an idea of what salvation is. And I got to speak to family members who I wouldn't normally get to speak to regularly at this funeral. And those family members believe all kinds of things. But I want to tell you this morning what the Bible says about knowing God as your father. 
Many claim that all people are children of God, but the Bible reveals quite a different truth. We are all His creations, and under His authority and lordship, and all will be judged by Him. But the right to be a child of God and call Him Abba Father is something that only born-again Christians have. You know, I was born once, and immediately I was named Tullus. Marshall and Lily Tullus were my parents. I was born into that family. Then in 1997, I was born again, according to the Bible. And because of that second birth, being born again, I became a child of God. I was no longer a child of wrath. I was no longer a child of my father, the devil. That's what the Bible says. I became a child of God. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with being a Baptist. It has nothing to do, to do with being a member of this church. I agreed with the Bible, and I accepted God as my Savior, and I become a child of God. I was born again. In John chapter 1, if you want to turn there, John 1, we'll be in John 1 and John 3, if you want to turn to these, and then we'll be back in Romans chapter 8. I always wait till everybody started turning, and I say, hold your place, because <laughs> it's too late. John 1 and John 3, and then we'll be back in Romans 8. In John chapter 1 and verse 12, Sounds like everybody's there. In John 1, 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That's being born again. In John chapter 3, if you'll turn there, Starting in verse 1, John chapter 3, it says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. So let's picture this. This is a very religious man and should have had the knowledge of who God is. But he came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Now notice Jesus' answer has nothing to do with a question that he was being questioned. But he knew the need. Jesus answers and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water. That was my first birth. I was born into the Tullus household, which was a fantastic place to be born into. That uh, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, that's the second birth, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. I want you to, if you're in the habit of marking your Bible, boy, this is a good section right here to underline. It says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Being born again is something you don't hear a lot. Um, a lot of churches don't talk about it, but it's biblical. I mean, the Bible, it's all throughout the Bible. But it says here, marvel not that I say you must be born again. I need to have, uh, let's have you three from GW that way. Have you three boys come up here. I want to show you something. 
hope I'm not jumping the gun here. You can turn back to Romans chapter 8, and verse 17, if you'll turn there. What a handsome group of men, young men here. They are. I want to illustrate something here when it says, He that is born of the flesh is flesh, and he that is born of the spirit is spirit. Um, every person, when God created us, he created us in his own image, and he created us with a body, flesh, with a soul, and with spirit, with three parts, right? That's what we are. Um, Balaji, let's see here, we'll make you be the body. GW is going to be, George is going to be the body. Sean is going to be the soul. And Balaji is going to be the spirit. Balaji, you need to take a seat there. Balaji, when you're born into this world, your spirit has not been quickened. Now, I want to clear something up too. I don't want people to get to wandering in their minds. Until you reach the age of accountability, you are going to heaven, period. You get a pass. If you are aborted in the womb, you're going to heaven. If you're born stillbirth, you're going to heaven. If you're born and one, two, three, four, five years old, you're, you're going to heaven. When you reach the age of accountability, I've heard it explained this way. I think it was Pastor Connors when, when you realize you're naked, right? You're like, oh, hey, <laughs> I need some clothes on. People are here, right? Or you walk by the bathroom and your, your parents are in the bathroom. You're like, ah, close the door, <laughs> right? Somewhere around in there. Now, I can't tell you an age for that, um, but I will tell you there is a point where every person reaches the age of accountability, and they understand what sin is. But Balaji here, he's our spirit. He's, he's just deflated. He exists, but he's not alive. So the system that we get used to using is this system right here. The body is our way we interact with our environment. Some of you are warm right now. I can tell you're going right to sleep. Some of you are always cold. That's how your body reacts to your environment. If I poke him, ah, right? That's his body. He's feeling, he smells, tastes, sees, hears. That's the function of the body. The soul is how we interact with each other. We love each other. We can't stand each other, right? That's our soul. That's how we interact with each other, our soul. And when we get saved, how we interact with God is our spirit. But until we get saved, we're our father's the devil, right? Until we get saved, we're children of, of wrath. So this guy right here, just reacts according to whatever his environment is. Comfort. This guy right here runs completely off emotion and feelings. This is our girl part. <laughs> that didn't go well. Here we go. <laughs> but this part of us tells that part of us, we're not going there because they don't like us. Right? Right? We can't go out right now because I have this big pimple on my forehead and I just can't stand somebody seeing me. Right? This, this guy right here says, oh, we have to go because I love them so much. Right? Because of this part right here, I got a lot of texts from people that says, hey, Brother Tim, I love you and I'm praying for you. Because of this part right here. Um, because of this part right here, many of you have reached out to my mom who don't even know my mom and did things for her. And uh, that's this part right here. I'm not saying this is a bad part, but when we're controlled by this part, that's a bad system. So when we get born again, when we trust Christ as our Savior, and we're born again... God quickens our spirit. It becomes alive. That's what the Bible says. And the Holy Spirit moves inside of us. Woo, that's pretty awesome. Right? 
And now, there's a new system that I'm going to talk to you about. See, the old system should be put away, but a lot of us trust the old system. I mean, why not? It's tried and true. The old system is what we trust in, our feelings. Brother Ray, why are you looking at me like that? He must be mad at me, right? That's what people say to me all the time because my resting face is like this. Right? So people, I think Jess is trying to work on her resting face because she says, people treat me like they treat you. <laughs> right? I think her resting face is like, like that too. But that's the old system. But let me talk to you about a new system. Romans chapter 8 and verse 17, y'all stay right there. If, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If we understood our standing, oh my, we'd live different. Joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Turn in your Bibles real quick. Ephesians. If you're in Romans... You're going to go to the right. You're going to go through 1st and 2nd Corinthians. And then you're going to get to Galatians. And then you're going to slow down because you get to Ephesians right after that and go to chapter 4 and verse 22. I want to talk to you about this system that we have. This new system that we have as born again, spiritually living children of God who have an Abba Father. Miss Christine? has been a real encouragement to me here in the last few days. She's always an encouragement, but here we go. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 22. It says that you put off concerning the former conversation. That word conversation is way of life. What you see about me is my conversation with you. That former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye may put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We're supposed to put off this whole system of, I'm just going to live according to my feelings. I'm just going to live according to what makes me feel good. I'm going to just live according to what I think I should do. We're supposed to put off this system and put on the new system. And these guys are starting to, they're supposed to follow this guy now. That is in every human being. This. That's the way God created us. Every one of us. Nobody misses out on this. Every human being has a body, a soul, and a spirit. Some human beings have a body and a soul and a spirit that's alive. Some human beings have a body and a soul and a spirit that they're dragging around and they're trusting the old system because he's not alive. They're not born again. But according to this passage right here, the only way that we can trust this new system, we stop trusting this system, we're living by sight, and start trusting this system when we're living by faith, the only way we can do that is to be renewed in our spirit of our mind. It says it right there in verse, let's see, verse 23, it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That only happens right here. Either the preaching of God's word or your personal studying of God's word. If you're not doing either one of those things, you're trusting the old system. And you're in a trap. And there's no possible way you're going to be able to please your Heavenly Father. So get in your Bibles. Make church a big deal. Because it's a big deal. Colossians chapter 3. If you're in Ephesians, you're going to go to the right. You'll pass Philippians. And then Colossians will be right there. Starting in verse 1. I just need you for this passage. You guys can go back to sleep, right? We're good. Here we go. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 it says, If ye then be risen with Christ, that's born again, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections. 
Set your affections. Right? Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead. This system, when you got born again, was sentenced to death. Some of us, we're pumping life into that thing every day. But this system should, not, should no longer exist. This is the new system. But we, we exclude this part. It says, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Verse 3 says, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. That is good. Verse 4, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Verse 5, mortify, that means put to death, therefore your members, which are upon the earth. And it goes and lists the whole kinds of fruit from those, from those members in verse 5. And in verse 6 it says, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. That's who you once were. But once you're born again, you're no longer a, children, a child of disobedience unless you choose to be. Do, 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 do. Verse 6. Uh, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Verse 7. In the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. Seeing that ye have put off the old man and his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You've put off the old man. You've put off this system completely. You just put it off because this is a system that's living by sight, a system that's living selfishly, and you start living for God. You start paying attention to your spirit. This is the new system. You've got a new member of your body. He's alive. He's there. He's wanting to take charge, but he won't take it. You have to give it to him. That's your spirit. And it says the way that you learn how to take use of this new system is that you're renewed, verse 9, I think it was. <laughs> oh, here we go. In verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That knowledge does not come from social media, though many of us act like that's where we get our knowledge. It doesn't come from the news. It comes from this book and only this book. If you want to start taking advantage of this new system where you can live in obedience to the God that saved you, to your new father, Abba Father, this is the only way. Put to death the old system and put this guy in charge. Well, how do you do that? Well, you get in that book right there, and you find out what God is, what he wants from you, and you put those things first. It's pretty simple to start off. He wants you to get in this book every day. That's simple. Open up this book. You make a spot in your day, clear it off, clean it out, and get in the book every day and study it. If you're not in the habit of doing that, start with five minutes. Give yourself five minutes in God's word. I'll guarantee it will help you if you're consistent in it. I heard a pastor, I think it was Pastor Crone, say, I would much rather have a church that was studying their Bible five minutes a day than to have a church where only one or two or three were studying their Bible every day for 15, 20, 30 minutes, a half hour, an hour. Get in a book. You want to start off? Get in a book every day. Renew the knowledge, the renewing of your minds. It happens in this book right here. Cleans that stuff out. I've heard people say, hey, you're brainwashing these teenagers brainwashing them, right, making them think they're special, right, and that's what we're doing, we're brainwashing them, we're getting the filth out and putting in the good stuff, 
Make church a big deal. Number one, get in your Bible every day. Two, make church a big deal. If you're not doing those two things, what you're doing is saying, hey, you got no part with me because I like the system that's here. If you're not studying your Bible every day, if you're not making church a big deal and trying to get in there as much as you can, then you're still trusting the old system. You're not being very kind, Brother Tullis. I've lived it. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm an example. I know this. But when you say, hey, I want to get renewed in my mind and I want to start trusting the new system and you, and you exalt your spiritual side, the part of you that interacts with God, then you find out, man, things are so much better. You guys can have a seat. Thank you. It's life-changing to understand what it means to be able to call the one true God our Abba Father. And what it means to be joint heirs with Christ. Because of our relationship with our Abba Father, He no longer deals with us as enemies. Instead, we can approach Him with boldness. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. And in full assurance of faith, Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. The Holy Spirit testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If you're still there in Romans chapter 8, it says, Romans eight sixteen. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. You know, I'm looking back at my life and the way I was raised, and I praise God. Um, we were never well off, but I was raised well. I was raised in church. I was raised to respect people. I was raised to do right. It's humbling to look at what I got at birth, knowing that they didn't birth me into this world. I was at birth. I got that family. Sometimes I was a terrible kid. You'll never get my mom to, mom was always talking about how good I was. And I don't know if, if mamas have this thing in their head that they can't compute the badness of their kids. <laughs> but I was a bad kid. And there was never a time that my standing as their son changed. They always wanted what's best for me. They always cared for me. I was, I was punished a lot. And I deserved every bit of it. Way more than what I got, I'm sure. But at the end of that punishment, I never wondered, I wonder if they're going to give me back. I wonder if they're going to send me back. You know, I was, it was never a, it was never a, uh, a secret that I was adopted. I think as far back as I can remember, we talked about it. But it's not something we talk about all the time. So when I think of mom and daddy, I think of the mom and daddy that God gave me. I don't think about somebody that gave me up at the hospital. Now that I'm older, sometimes I think about, because of health reasons, I think about that. I think about wondering, you know, if, if the woman that gave me up at birth, if she's saved, if she knows Jesus. I think about those things. But I've never ran back searching, thinking, man, I'm missing out on something. Because God gave me exactly who I needed. Amen. When you're born again, we shouldn't run back to the old system. God quickens your spirit. It's up to us to be renewed in our minds, to be renewed in our knowledge of who God is, 
and choose to be led by the Spirit instead of being led by the, the flesh or led by our soul, which is all emotions. Becoming a child of God is the highest and most humbling of honors. Because of it, we have a new relationship with God and a new standing before Him. I don't think I made this clear, but before we're born again, we're called children of wrath because we're on our way to hell. Period. You don't have to do something to earn it. You're on your way. You don't have to be really bad to go to hell. You're just on your way because you're a child of wrath. When you're born again, you have a new standing. Instead of a judge, you have a father, an Abba Father. Instead of running from God... And trying to hide our sin like Adam and Eve did, we run to him calling Abba Father. In finding forgiveness in Christ, being an adopted child of God is the source of our hope, the security of our future, and the motivation to live a life worthy of the calling you've received. In Ephesians chapter 4, it says, I therefore, the prisoner of God, our prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. Being children of the King of kings and Lord of lords calls us to a higher standard. You know, I, I knew what my dad wanted when it came time to get a haircut. He would actually pay for it. And the money that my dad gave me, and she'd say, what kind of haircut do you want, Tim? And I'd say, well, just cut it on the front, short on the sides, but leave it long in the back. is a mullet and that's because I was a rebel now I knew my daddy did not want me to have a haircut like that but that's what I'd ask for and then when I would go home I'd think oh I wonder if he's going to notice <laughs> <laughs> and many times he would send me back down there to get the rest of my haircut but you know as I got older especially around the time I got saved, I knew what my daddy wanted, and I did it because he wanted it. I knew what he preferred, and I did it because he preferred it. And as a child of God, that's where God wants us to be. Not living in fear of judgment, or I don't know if I can keep all these rules, but knowing who your father is by being renewed in your spirit of your mind and renewed in knowledge, knowing who he is, what he desires, and you, because of your standing, say, you know what, I want to do that for my daddy. I want to do that because it's right. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he began with the words, our father. There's much truth in those two words alone. The holy and righteous God who created and sustains all things, who is all-powerful, all-knowing, and ever-present, not only allows us to be, or allows us, but encourages us to call him Father. What a privilege is ours. What amazing grace that God would love us so that Jesus would sacrifice himself for us and that the Holy Spirit would indwell us and prompt our intimate cry of Abba, Father. Do you know my father? Many of you never knew my daddy, although he did live here for a couple years. But do you know my father, my heavenly father? Do you know him? Do you have that relationship with him that I'm talking about? Have you been born again? I'll finish with this. The Bible's very clear. You must be born again. And to be born again just takes some agreement. First, you need to agree with God that you are a sinner. You know, when I was 27, I got out of the military. I'd been raised in church my whole life, but it never clicked. And when I was 27 years old, I was sitting in a church service in Oklahoma City. And a preacher started preaching on sin. And for the first time in my, my life, I realized I'm going to hell because of my sin. 
And Christ died on the cross for my sin. It's the first time. 27. Crazy. I was just like you guys. Grew up in church. Hear it all the time. But it's like somebody turned a light switch on, and I was looking at that preacher preaching, and I said, I am a sinner because of my sin, and I'm on the way to hell because of my sin. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you want to be born again, you need to agree that you're a sinner and you need to be born again. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You need to agree with God that your sin has to be paid for. Amen. Romans 6, 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. That word death there is talking about the second death. It's when people are cast into the lake of fire. You know, earlier I said, you know, people think, some people think, well, we're all God's children, and that's not true. But God is our judge, and every person, every person will stand before God and be judged. You're either going to be at the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ, but you will be judged. And this says, for the wages of sin is death. There's no other way to pay for your sin but to die and be cast into a lake of fire and spend an eternity there. If you want to do it yourself, that's the only thing you can do. That's your only option. According to the Bible, is for you to die and after the judgment, be cast into the lake of fire and you'll spend eternity there. Well, I wasn't that bad. It doesn't matter. That's where you're headed unless you're born again. Romans 6.23 also says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. If you agree with the Bible that you're a sinner, and you agree with the Bible that your sin comes with a payment, then I want to tell you this. Agree with God that Christ is our only hope. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God loved you and I enough to send his only Son to die for our sins. Jesus himself says in John 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's what the Bible says. If you can agree with God with those things, all you have to do is believe and ask. In Romans 10, 9, it says, that it, Who, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's available for everybody. You say, well, I've lived a terrible life. and The Bible's very clear. It's available for everybody. This is the last phrase. You can choose to say yes to Jesus. You can choose to say no to Jesus. But you cannot choose to not make a decision. Because I've just armed you with the knowledge of how to get from here up to heaven. If you are not saved today, and you don't get saved today, you're rejecting Christ. Now, God gave me this when I was faced with eternity with my daddy. Because every person will face that. And if there's anything that I could do for my daddy right now, it's to tell you how to go to heaven. And that's the truth of the gospel. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's what I want to do. If you're in here today and you know Jesus Christ is your Savior and you've been born again, here's my encouragement to you. Live according to the Spirit. Be renewed in your spirit of your mind. Study your Bibles and go to church. Live for God. Stop living for yourself. Because one of these days, none of that's going to matter. If you're in here today and you're not born again, 
If you're sitting in your seat and you're saying, well, I've never heard that before. Well, that's something new. My friends have never told me that, or my church has never told me that, or my religion doesn't say that. I want to ask you, would you trust God's word this morning and be born again? The only thing that I did to deserve heaven was be born again. That's it. Not because I'm a preacher, not because I'm a, a dad and I love my wife and I love my church and I serve. It's not because of those things. I was born again. That's it. If you'll stand to your feet, close your Bibles, if I can get somebody up to play the piano. I want to pray, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to make a decision for the Lord. If, uh, if I can help you, I'd sure love to help you. If you come up to the altar and you need help, there'll be someone on each side to help you. Lord, I sure do love you, and I thank you for your goodness. God, thank you for your word. God, how clear it is about heaven and hell, about our standing, whether we're children of wrath or a child of God. But it's very clear we're one or the other. We're not both. What a blessing it is to know that I'm no longer a child of wrath. What a blessing it is to know that you are my heavenly Father. God, I pray that you'd work in this invitation as only you can. I've done my best to say what's on my heart that you placed on my heart. God, I pray that you would do the work that only you can do now. And these things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As the music plays, if you feel like you need to make a decision, come on up here. If you're in here today... And you think to yourself, I don't know that I'm saved. It would be heartbreaking for you to leave with that same thought. If you're in here today and you want to be born again, you want to be saved according to the Bible, if you'll come forward, we'll show you from the Bible how you can be saved. All right, well, I sure thank you for coming today. If you, uh, if you don't normally come here and you want to definitely want to come back and see our pastor, hear from our pastor, um, Miss Barbara has family back there on the back. They didn't, uh, they didn't raise their hand or anything, but I'm going to embarrass them anyway. Um, her brother reached out to me and, and was asking if she could start riding the bus, and we were tickled to be able to pick her up on the bus, so... If you get a chance, go back there and see them. Um, I'm going to ask Brother John if he'll close us in prayer. The bus workers need to boogie out of here.